Boys, today I'm going to be showing you how to play against the Sicilian defense. In this video, I will be telling you everything you need to know about how to destroy the Sicilian defense. So stick around to find out. But first, this video is sponsored by me. Because I'm great. Anyway, what you're going to want to do is play knight to f3 after the Sicilian. Because knight to c3 is pretty lame. Now, the most common move that you will face is knight to c6. And now, he, of course, you should play d4. If you can put two pawns in the center, you probably should. Now, after takes, takes, there are a few moves that black can play here, the most common of which are e5 and knight to f6. If e5 is played, what you actually want to do is not go back. You want to go knight to b5. The reason why is because there could potentially be some things on the c7 square. But more importantly, because it allows your knight to get into d6. However, here d6 is the most popular move anyway. And sometimes here, if you are, you know, of a low level, you can play bishop to g5. Because after they take, you can fork them and you pick up this rook. The reason why I say at a low level is because it, if you're at a higher level, they're probably not going to let this knight escape. And also, like, knight and bishop become better as people know how to control them more than just a rook. In this position, I would say the best move is actually c4. And if now they play the most common move, a6, you can just go back, boom, and you'll get a position uh, like this with this cool structure here, and you have a pretty high, like, 55% win rate here. But if they don't play d6 here, and instead play the second move, a6, well, obviously you're going to want to check them. They're going to take, and boom. And especially at the beginner level, this queen can be really annoying to deal with. But if they come out and attack your queen, you actually, the best move for you is to just go queen d1. But this is a slightly better position for white because you now have the bishop pair. And after the most common move, knight to f6, you have a 55% win rate, especially after knight c3. Back in this position, if they play the other common move, which is knight to f6, if they go knight to f6, what you will want to do is obviously play uh, knight to c3. And it, you'll probably get the same position here this time, this time with knight to b5, d6. The difference is here, this knight's already out, which means you can go knight d5, threatening this. They're forced to take. And they really should go back to b8 here, because if they go something like b4, then you will do something like a3, they're forced to go back to a6, and then c4, and you get this big center, and you have a win rate of almost 65% here. So after you reached this position, which is actually pretty much like almost forced, oh, whoopsies, uh, you will still play c4. And after the most common move, bishop e7, you can actually play c5. If they take, you have the move d6. And what d6 does is that you it forks the c7 square and the bishop. So if they go to f3, for example, you will do this and win a rook. So the best move for black here is just to castle and lose the bishop. Anyway, here, if they play the move castles, now you will play bishop to d3. And after you reach this position, you kind of just have to play some chess. You do have a 55% win rate and a pretty good position. But this still applies if they take here, just a bit less. Taking is still bad. If they think they're good, well, then there's this, and there's bishop h4, I guess. You can still play knight c7 and still win this exchange. And if you do reach this position, a trap you'll probably get is they think this is a free pawn, but then they get hit with bishop takes, boom, and you actually just win a queen, and you're still going to win the rook. Anyway, that was it for the open Sicilian. 
Now it's time to move on to the d6 Sicilian, the other most common move. And of course here, once again, you want to play d4. Take, take, knight f6 is by far the most common moves. And now you may play knight c3, but what is the better move by win rate is actually f3. And what will likely happen here is that Black will play something like a6, trying to play the Najdolf. But then you'll just play c4. Maybe they'll play e5, attacking your knight. You'll just go back to c7. And after this, play knight c3. And you have, uh, it's plus 0.8. It's pretty good. And you have a 58% win rate. If instead here they play g6, you can do the same thing with c4. They'll go bishop to g7, play bishop to e3, they castle, and the point of bishop to e3 is that you get this battery and you're probably going to go trade the bishop off. However, if your opponent plays knight to c6, you can't actually do that even though this knight has two defenders on it. The, those defenders will be gone when this happens. So play knight c3, but just remember to be patient in doing this. You know, just develop slowly, bishop e2. Because if you rush too much, and... Um, well, actually, the best move here is to take this anyway. Now you take with the bishop. And in this position, actually, after the most common move, bishop to c6, you can castle long and have a 54% win rate. It's also a full pawn up for white. And even after e5 in this position... The traps are not over. You can play bishop to b5, and after this, this. And if they take with the knight or queen, then you will play knight to f5 and attack this pawn and prevent the bishop from moving out. And actually, the most common move here is black is just g6, which hangs this pawn. And now, you're just up a pawn, your queen is dominant, and it's plus 2.1. If here they actually do play the best move, which is d5, uh, I can't really tell you what to play other than just take it. And after knight b6, you can actually do kind of a queen's gambit style thing, where after they take, you play this and defend the pawn. But you have more development here and a higher win rate. Anyway, that is going to be it for part one of this How to Face the Queen's Gambit video. It's already pretty long. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for part two. Bye!